Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining the Academic Summer School webinar for summer 2020 at SOAS. Uh, my name is John Whitaker. Um, I coordinate the Academic Summer School programme and I'm here with my colleague Rupa. So we're both going to be uh, chatting through a few details with you all um, today. Uh, about the summer program and about uh, a bit about SOAS and about what we offer um, and basically answer any questions that you guys have as well. Um, and, and on that you can, uh, I think, type any questions that you have as we go. So if you've got any questions at all about anything we're talking about, then just write them in the, in the text box here and we'll be able to see those uh, so we can answer anything as we go. And then at the end, we'll, we'll have some time for, for any questions as well. So um, yeah, either of those is absolutely fine. Don't worry about stopping us as we go through. But we'll keep it very kind of informal and, uh, and hopefully just give you any information you need and uh, yeah, help you along the process of applying for the summer school and, and coming to study here in London and at SOAS this summer. Um, so I don't know, how much you all already might know about SOAS. Some of you might know it quite well. Some of you might not have heard uh, about SOAS at all. So I thought we could give you um, just a very brief kind of overview of SOAS, the kind of things that we teach here, and um, yeah, a kind of a brief kind of general overview just to let anyone know who's not so familiar with SOAS about the kind of things and, and what we do and the approaches that we take. So, I mean, in terms of SOAS, uh, we are the School of Oriental and African Studies. We're part of the University of London. And we are, well, at least Europe's leading institution, but some would say maybe the world leading institution for the study of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. So although we offer courses across our kind of, all the kind of core areas that you would see at other institutions, uh, whether that be law, politics, finance and management, business, economics, all of those things we offer. But we, uh, the approach we take is, is, is always with kind of looking through the lens of Asia, Africa and the Middle East and using perhaps case studies that are from those regions or uh, we'll always kind of be looking at the kind of global context rather than uh, perhaps a Western context that a lot of institutions or a lot of other places uh, would kind of start with. So our starting point is looking outwardly, looking at these other regions, looking at Asia, Africa and the Middle East and starting there and looking at the, the issues and problems faced there, but bringing that all together uh, and looking at these core concepts in relation to finance, business, law, politics and all of those key kind of things that, that we're all kind of interested in and, and we'll be focusing on throughout our kind of academic life and throughout our careers. But um, at SOAS you really get a real kind of specialised um, approach to the teaching here um, that often isn't offered anywhere else and often isn't uh, the things you kind of hear and learn um, are really things that you just don't really hear elsewhere. Um, so in terms of our teaching, it's quite unique in that respect. Kind of relating back to the summer school programs that we offer, the, the, the faculty that uh, we have at SOAS are often from the regions that we teach about. So, so you're not kind of hearing um, from someone who's just studied kind of these regions. You're hearing from, from experts that have, have lived in these regions who have grown up there and who have now kind of come to SOAS as a kind of real uh, melting pot and, and hotbed for this kind of teaching and this kind of academic expertise. Um, and they all kind of gravitate to SOAS in some kind of way because of the, the kind of unique approach that we have. Um, so our faculty, our teachers, um, and, and these will be the, the teachers that you, you hear from on the Academic Summer School. They're core faculty, so these are the teachers that are teaching our degree programs. These are the people who are then teaching our summer programs as well. You're not kind of we're not drafting in external people um, just for the summer. These are our often heads of departments, they're senior academics, they're senior professors who teach on our degree programs and they also teach on our courses over the summer. And I would uh, definitely encourage you to, to go onto our website and have a look on our course descriptions. You'll find each convenient. There, 
and just go and have a look at their biographies and, and see the kind of research they've done and, and the areas they're focusing on because you'll learn so much about the kind of what their background is and, and what they're going to be bringing to the courses just by having a quick look at, uh, at their names, have a search of their names and seeing what information is on the website. And yeah, as I said, you're kind of what people always say when they come to SOAS, especially on the summer school, is that they learn and hear things that uh, they kind of never knew before or they get perspectives that they just weren't aware of. Um, partly that's because of the teaching and, and the things that are taught here, but also because um, of the group of students that, that come on, uh, that come to SOAS over the summer. So you'll get students from all over the world who are sharing their um, perspectives on, on these issues. And so it's not just learning from the teachers, it's learning from your group and your, uh, your peers as well. Um, and that's basically a yeah, general in, kind of intro to SOAS, um, as well as our kind of world-renowned academic expertise. One of the other things that makes us so special um, is, is really our student body. Um, and the kind of international student community that we have here at SOAS, not just um, throughout, the, um, throughout our term time, but, but also over the summer as well. Um, and you get a particular type of person who comes to SOAS. It's not really, uh, it's very different, I think, from other, other places, especially other places in London, um, where you get these very big universities that attract lots and lots of students. But here at SOAS, you really get a feel for the certain type of person who comes here. They're very politically motivated, uh, often kind of involved activists um, in various forms across London. Um, and they're all kind of, they all want to make change in the world, positive change. Um, and that's really the, the kind of perspective that we have here is, is making positive change in the world and, and influencing people um, and uh, making a difference basically. So we all kind of come with that approach and you can really feel that here at SOAS is that we're all kind of together um, uh, and heading towards a kind of shared goal of making the world a better place really. Um, so the student body here is something that really stands out um, from other universities and something that people really love to just get involved with and, uh, and experience. So that's one of the special things about SOAS. So then just quickly about um, where we are, where, we, where SOAS is placed uh, within London. We're kind of perfectly located uh, in central London uh, in Bloomsbury. It's an area with, with uh, it's kind of buzzing area really with lots of other universities very close by. We've got UCL, we've got Birkbeck. Uh, and various other uh, University of London uh, institutions that are based within a stone's throw uh, of SOAS. But in the wider scheme of things, we're, we're a very short walk from um, places like the British Museum, the British Library, uh, Covent Garden, uh, which is a really nice area, um, and Oxford Circus, Trafalgar Square, Leicester Square and Soho. So you've got these places that are about a 10 minute walk basically from SOAS. So it's not just um, a great place to come to on its own. You get to explore London just by kind of being cl very close uh, to all of these main kind of attractions. Uh, so it's a great pl place to base yourself. Uh, our accommodation is, is very close by, so you'll be really in the heart of London um, and be able to kind of just explore um, the various kind of areas that, uh, that are really close by to SOAS. So we're in a really good place uh, and location within London. Transport links are brilliant, so you'll never be far from a tube station. Uh, you can get around London. London is, is very big, but you can get around very quickly. Um, and yeah, I would just say that there, you won't really get a better location in terms of coming to London, London to study. And because you're here for a relatively short time over the summer, um, you want to be very close and, and you want things conveniently located. So, um, so yeah, in terms of where we're placed, uh, we're, we're, we're in, a, in, a, in a very good location. So I think I'm going to hand over to Ruha to speak a little bit more now. We'll, we'll start to give you an overview of our summer program. So it's the academic summer school. Um, and Ruha will talk you through the specific details about how we're, how the courses are structured. We also arrange around 20 courses that are designed to inspire, challenge, and develop your critical thinking skills. 
and you can see in the table on the right that we cover a range of different areas from law to politics to finance to regional studies and many many more you can see the dates listed at the top of the table and each course is three weeks long but you do have the opportunity to choose to stay for six weeks six weeks with us um, by choosing one course from each session um, i'll talk about it in a bit more detail later but if you do choose to study two courses you will be eligible for a 10 percent discount as well which is great um, so in terms of how the courses are structured each course is full-time which means monday to friday roughly 10 a.m to 3 p.m which typically will consist of a mixed hour lecture in the morning a two-hour tutorial or seven hour in the afternoon and then a busy contest that leads us to cross um, for three weeks um, we do kind of hold a few different social events. We'll be um, talking a bit more later about our guest lectures um, and workshop series that you can get involved with. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, you can choose to study our courses for credit. Um, if you do choose the credit assessed option, you'll pay a slightly higher fee um, and then be required to complete the course assessment and you'll receive a transcript at the end of the study confirming your marks and your credit. And of course, if you don't choose to study, the credit you will not be required to study any of your final course assessments um, it's worth mentioning as well that we do receive receive very mixed cohort applications um, so that includes undergraduates from all years postgraduates working professionals from a range of industries um, and yeah i'm going to pass back to you to speak a little bit about our guest lecture and work series yeah i mean i i come in a little bit just on a point that Ruha made there about the, the mixture of students. I mean, so Ruha was just giving you really a, an overview of the of the program and of the courses that we offer. So it's a typical kind of structure. It'll be Monday to Friday. You'll have usually lectures in the morning and you'll have tutorial seminar discussion sessions in the afternoon. But interspersed with those, we, we don't kind of just keep it very classroom based. We want to get you out and about in London. So you'll visit various sites various uh, organizations sometimes that are linked with uh, the topics that you're studying uh, it could be an ngo that are working in a particular area on the development perhaps um, so you'll go out and visit these places you might go to the british museum and, and see the uh, the africa archive that they got there um, so we try and take you out of the classroom as much as possible so you're not going to just be based in the classroom having lectures and then uh, and that's it you're going to be uh, out on various visits and trips um, and the structure and the schedule will be quite varied on, on all of our courses. Um, but something I just kind of wanted to chime in on there on, and what Ruha was mentioning was the kind of mixture of students that we get on our, on our courses, which again, I think is quite different to other places. Our courses attract undergraduates and they are taught at a kind of second to third year undergraduate level, but we get primarily, I think a lot, a lot of the applications that we've had through at the moment are from postgraduate students and, and that's perfectly fine. We 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 our courses are designed to uh, be uh, appropriate for postgraduates as well. But also get a lot of kind of young career professionals or people working kind of out in the field who want to either refresh their uh, kind of knowledge on a particular area or or they're using it as some kind of professional development. So you you really get to hear so much kind of expertise from people who aren't just either currently or have graduated but from people working uh, in these various fields as well so that's something that people say is is so great about doing a summer school course at SOAS is that uh, the people again the people that you hear from so that's just to say that our courses are very mixed in terms of the, the range of students that we get we, we're not just specifically designed for one level of student uh, summer courses are they the same every year our program changes year on year so some of our courses have been running uh, since we since we started which is about eight years ago uh, so we have a core um, selection of courses that will run every year but we always add new ones in as well so it does change each year but we have we have a core set of around 10 10 or so courses that will run each year um, if there's any particular areas that you're uh, interested in then then let us know on the chat and we can say which courses might be most appropriate but this slide just basically gives you an overview of what courses are on offer this year um, one of the the other new things that we have uh, developed for this year is that you can study for credit so they're all credit bearing they offer 15 
credits or 15 SOAS credits per course. Um, so if you're currently studying and you would like to use uh, or you'd like to earn credit over the summer at SOAS and take that back perhaps to your home institution and transfer that credit, then it makes it a lot easier for you if, you're, if, you're, if you choose to study for credit. But some people also, as I said, there's a lot of professionals who don't particularly require credit, so they can take a non-credit route, which means that you don't complete any of the final assessments on the course, and you can just study the course for the experience, but you don't actually uh, receive an, an assessment or a final grade or transcript at the end. So we have two, we have a credit-bearing route and a non-credit-bearing route on every course, um, but you will all come together and study the same course. Got a question here. Monitoring and evaluation for next summer will be interesting for me. So that's great. So we'll note that down. Thank you. Development evaluation. So we've got the project program and policy evaluation, um, which may be of interest to you. I'd, I'd suggest having a quick look at that, but we'll take we'll make a note of any suggestions you have for courses. It's really actually helpful for us to know what you guys might be interested in. Um, if there's any areas that you think we we could cover, then then please do tell me. Culture. Ethnography would be interesting for young professionals, definitely. That's a great suggestion. Um, I mean, culture, I mean, those areas I think are covered in quite a, a lot of our courses, um, but maybe something specifically around that. Of course, our, our courses around understanding Africa, um, gender, uh, will cover that kind of uh, culture aspect. Um, and I think all of our courses will look at cultures in these various regions as well. Research methodology, we, we actually offer. Um, only I know the content. So we've got an understanding re research methods course um, available in session one. So that's there. There's another exciting element about our summer program that I think isn't offered anywhere else. Um, and that's uh, the addition of guest lectures, a guest lecture series, and, and also workshops. Uh, practical skills workshops. I'll focus on the, the guest lectures first. So aside from the, the kind of core subject learning and, and those courses that we were just talking about there, um, in the first week of your programs, whether it's session one or session two, uh, we will uh, be offering guest lectures that are open to everyone. It's a time for, where all students across all courses can come together um, and hear from um, kind of People who are working in the field again within it could be within media, but they really honed. They're designed to hone your uh, communication skills. These guest lectures, so um, you'll hear from uh, BBC news anchors, political journalists. Um, there's, I think, we've got a uh, kind of public speaking uh, communications expert who who trains leading business CEOs. Um, so there's going to be, as you can see on the slide here, in, in the first week we've got. There's a couple of funny names there. So Bend It Like Obama um, is actually a session on uh, public speaking and, and where you can tailor any kind of speech you have uh, to make it sound as good as something that uh, Barack Obama might have said and, and the way he kind of structures his speeches. Um, and then we're offering kind of, there's also panel discussions uh, around feminist politics, uh, around gender. Um, so basically in week one, three guest lectures uh, to bring everyone together to hear from from experts and this is something that we do at SOAS during the term time as well for our uh, full-time students is, is this kind of communication media skills type training and and that ties into the workshops we offer them as well um, so week one we we have this guest lecture series from experts in the field who will come to SOAS they'll do a talk for about an hour um, after your courses are taught, so between kind of uh, four to five uh, in the evening, or in the late afternoon, um, and that'll be a way to, for us to just bring everyone together, to even get get kind of courses networking between each other. That was a uh, one of the comments we had last year is that people thought they they wanted more networking opportunities between courses, not just with the the group of students that they have. Uh, on their, their particular course. So we're looking at ways to bring everyone, the whole group together more, and, and this could be a good way to start off conversations as well. Um, so they're open to everyone. That's just part of the program, and it's just a, an exciting element in your first week. Um, but then in weeks two and three, you have the option to add some practical skills workshops uh, to your summer program. 
there's a small way to add those to your to your course. Um, but what they will do, uh, what they're designed to do, they're very kind of interactive, immersive workshops that will provide a taste of the kind of practical skills that we teach here at SOAS. Um, so they're around kind of media skills and political skills training, um, and they're practical skills that you can actually take away with you. So aside from the teaching of the theory and practice related to your particular program, uh, we're offering workshops that are designed to increase your kind of um, employability skills and careers skills. So we're thinking of what you can take away with you after the summer and, and put uh, into your kind of future careers here. So um, there'll be things like CV workshops, there'll be uh, newsroom simulations one of the workshops is a newsroom simulation where you'll be uh something a massive news story will will come up at the last minute and you'll you, you have to kind of adapt and and deal with that and how you approach that other ones will be about around using your voice and, and kind of managing the kind of power differentials you might experience within a room and, and making yourself effective um so there's lots of things there that you can add to your program that will enhance your kind of employability further down the line we think this will be a, a really attractive aspect uh, for this summer and, and in the future um, we're not just focus, focusing on academia we want to, we want to come away with skills that you can put towards your uh, your futures and your careers in whichever area you're going into so that's just to mention those and i there's lots of information on the website so i would say go on to the academic summer school website each workshop is uh, explained fully and the lectures are explained as well um, and any questions about those just let us know. As I said, so the guest lectures will uh, happen after the core teach. So your teaching will happen normally from between 10 till 3 in the afternoon. Uh, so at 3 o'clock onwards you're kind of free. Uh, the guest lectures will probably take place between 3 and 5 so we'll get you all together for those during the first week then the workshops take place also between three and five um so it's still within that kind of nine to five day you'll have your core teaching up until around three o'clock normally and then the workshops take place uh, after three o'clock uh, but not too late so we don't want you to have uh, a really long day and for you to be exhausted but um i think these will be a really good thing that you can add to your program as well. Just something to say on the workshops is that the spaces are limited just because of the nature of them. They're very practical and hands-on. We'll be getting you to kind of uh, work together uh, in groups as a, as a kind of one big group really and, and in that sense we need to keep the numbers uh, fairly small for each session. So um, numbers are limited so if you're interested in those I'd, I'd get in there as soon as possible and Add those to your application if you haven't applied yet um, but also the workshops run across both sessions so um, perhaps if someone's studying two courses you could choose perhaps whether to do a few of the workshops in both sessions but we'll always try to find space for you anyway but just to say that, that there is uh, a limited capacity on them so we're going to talk a little bit about the discounts we offer on the tuition fees and and our scholarships that are available we've got another question are there additional fees for the workshop so workshops are so it's a hundred pounds to add workshops to your uh, program so um in the grand scheme of things fairly low it's it's an expensive package to come to london uh we know the accommodation flights and and the tuition as well um but yeah, so for the workshops, there's a small fee of £100 to add that. Uh, so I'm going to hand you over to Ruha now to talk over the next slide. Um, so to begin with, we offer an early bird discount. So that's for everyone who applies before the 31st of March, you'll be eligible for 10% of your tuition fees. Um, as I mentioned before, if you choose to study two courses with us over the summer, you'll also be eligible for a 10% discount. Um, and then finally, we offer discounts for um, students who are SAS alumni, as well as um, students coming from our partner, partner institutions. Um, we have a full list of partner institutions on our website, but if you are unsure as to whether you fall under 
one of those institutions, please just drop us an email and we'll be able to um, let you know whether or not you qualify. So to go um, back onto the Ambassador Scholarship, um, we offer six tuition fee waiver Ambassador Scholarships. So these basically cover the tuition fees one course per successful applicant and these are available for passionate students who have a desire to make a difference in the world. Um, to apply the process is very simple. All you need to do is send in a video response to the question that you can see on screen. So the question is, so as inspires students to make a difference in the world, what inspires you and how your chosen summer course helps you to make a difference? So all you need to do is film a video response to the question. We're not worried about the quality of the video so much. So feel free to film it on your phone, your laptop, whatever you have with you. Um, and then you can send that to us via email, which will be at the end of the presentation. Um, and the, disc, uh, the deadline for the Ambassador Scholarship is the um, 13th of March. Um, it has been extended. So if you had a look on our website before, you might have seen that it was the second. It has been extended to the 13th of March. And we will hopefully um, get back to you by the 20th of March, by the very latest, about the outcome. Um, so yeah, just to say that uh, I think that there's, there's information again on the website about the scholarships, but um, there'll be there'll be things that we'll we'll be asking of of the winners uh, of these scholarships over the summer. So there'll be blog posts, uh, there'll be social media takeovers, uh, and there'll be various promotional things that we we ask uh, the winners to do. Um, but it's a great opportunity. We've increased it to six this year. Um, and, and it's really, we call them ambassador scholarships because we want those people to, to go back to their home institutions or to go back uh, to wherever they're, they're living and, and to really uh, help us to, to promote SOAS and promote the, the summer school opportunities as well. So um, they can talk a little bit about their experiences and that might be quite useful to think about when you're applying for yours. Um, about our ambassador scholarships, we also um, offer additional bursaries for two courses, so for Understanding Africa and Decolonizing Translation and Translation Studies. Um, if you would like more information on these, I'd recommend either getting in touch with us by email or looking on the course pages where there's more information. Um, the deadline for bursaries for Decolonizing Translation and Translation Studies is a little bit later. So it's um, the 31st of, sorry, the 3rd of April. So you've got a bit more time there. So it's just very quick one, really, just to say, um, while you're here over the summer, you summer school students will have full access to the SOAS library, which is um, an incredible kind of resource for um, journals and academic texts that um, you won't find uh, anywhere else, uh, especially related to, to these specific regions that we, we, we focus on. So uh, this is just a quick one, just to, you know, a lot of people come to SOAS specifically just to use the library. Um, it's a national library and it's it's pretty incredible the kind of things that, that we've got here. Um, and as uh, summer school students, you'll, you'll have full access to that while you're here. Uh, one of the things and one of the, uh, one of the benefits about studying for credit is that uh, that gives you access to our offline journal. So if you're not on campus or you've returned home, you'll be able to access the li some library material offline. That's uh, uh, something that we can only offer to credit bearing students at the moment. But what I would say is that uh, when you complete a summer school, you can sign up as SOAS alumni and, and receive all the benefits that SOAS alumni gets. And that actually gives you access to the uh, online journals and academic resources that the library offers uh, off campus. So, I think we've kind of got a workaround for it. So if you're studying for credit, you will you will automatically that. But if you're if you decide not to study for credit, I would definitely suggest signing up as alumni, which you can do while you're here over the summer, and that then will will grant you access anyway. I think to, to these offline journals. Um, a lot of students say that it's really helpful to uh, once they've gone home to still be able to access uh, some of the material that they were uh, reading and looking through uh, while they were here. So, um, yeah, I think that's quite a big thing to, to mention there. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next slide. And I think I'm going back to Ruha on this one. So just a bit of information about London in the summer. 
So as um, John mentioned earlier, you are going to be based in a location in London. Um, our campus is based in Bloomsbury, so you're really in the heart of central London. You're really closely located to places like Oxford Circus, um, Trafalgar Square, some of our most amazing museums and libraries as well. So there'll be plenty of opportunity to explore London to get up to some exciting things whilst you study with us. Um, I would definitely recommend taking a look at our blog. I know I mentioned it before, um, but we've got some posts that are very much centred around the things that you can do in London. We've got a blog post specifically about the parks that we have. We've got one about um, the food that you can eat here, which is really great. Um, we actually have a really cool farmer's market too, which I'd recommend trying if you come here. Um, so definitely have a look at those. Um, and then we also have our student testimonials up on our website, which are a bit more general, but will also give you an idea of how great it is really to study in London. Um, and we'll be having convener interviews going up on our blog too, so definitely look out for those. You might see um, the convener of a course you're interested in um, discussing their, course, their research in a little bit more detail, which might be quite useful. Page on this uh, on this slide. Um, there's so many uh, really useful uh, articles on. It's really great uh, to just have a little flick through. So I definitely check that out. Um, and yeah, basically, London in the summer is is it really an amazing time. I think everyone's kind of hibernating over the winter and are just looking forward to the summer when it gets warmer and you can just go outside into the parks and, and really explore and, and just access everything that London has to offer. I think the summer is, everyone in London really just waits for the summer and, and it's a really, really fun time to be here. So uh, obviously these courses are kind of perfectly timed for you guys to visit London. Um, what else is I going to say about that? Gotten, but there was something else. But yeah, I think what I'd say is just definitely check out the the blogs that our previous students have written because um as ruha says uh they're the people who who have come here hear from their perspectives um they've got some really kind of interesting things that they've gone and done places they've gone to visit uh things that they've eaten and the food they've eaten yeah so something ruha mentioned is we have a farmer's market here on the soas campus um every thursday which uh, serves amazing food from kind of all over the world uh, lots of vegetarian vegan options uh we always kind of head out there on a thursday and, and uh, try all these different things we've also got a harry krishna stall that serves uh gives out free food and that's something a lot of students tend to access when they're here on campus um is and they do really uh interesting uh different kind of dishes that they serve up and they give that out for free or you can donate to them. So um, we have Hare Krishna stalls here set up on campus that are here over the summer as well. And um, so that makes kind of food a little bit cheaper for you, but also, I mean, the options in London for food, I'm very greedy myself. So um, I've tried a lot of them uh, and yeah, you'll never, you'll never go hungry. I don't think uh, when you come here. We've got some questions here on library after summer school when access for library so your library accounts are active uh for three months after the summer school so i think it takes you up until around the beginning of december so if you're staying in london if you're uk based you can still go in and out of the library with your soas card until december um and your offline access uh will give you access up until the end of uh, sorry that beginning of december as well so you'll have a few months after the course to access all of the materials until your account as a summer school student does expire but as i said if you sign up as soas alumni which we'll we'll send detail everyone while they're here on doing that um and so we recommend doing that and that will give you access to the kind of electronic journals and resources that the library offers as well so so that, that can continue then and you'll always be a alumni uh, even if you don't study for credit you'll be yeah so again um, if you don't study for credit definitely sign up as alumni uh, and and you'll gain that kind of uh, e-journal access and, and offline off-campus access as well in my first time in London how could we manage accommodation and transport in the town so we got we, we're actually going to be speaking about accommodation next in fact so that's good timing so uh if i had 
screen size a second and we'll talk about the accommodation options uh, and also transportation around uh, London as well. Uh, so accommodation, we have a range of uh, a range of SOAS halls available over the summer. So you can see the three here. Um, Urban Nest and intercollegiate halls are, are kind of the top two that we recommend. We've uh, arranged discounts at those halls for summer school students as well. Um, so this is a discounted rate that you're seeing on the screen. Dinwiddie House, that's their standard summer uh, accommodation rate. Um, from our experience, we, we think the top two Urban Nest and intercollegiate halls are probably the nicer of the three. Uh, Dinwiddie House uh, is great as well, um, but I think in terms of what you get for your money, the, for, the top two are probably uh, uh, the two better options, but space is more limited in these two. So I'd say if you're looking at accommodation, book that as soon as you can, and we'll talk about the booking process in a second. Um, all of the halls are located very, very close uh, conveniently to the SOAS campus. I think maximum would be a kind of 15, 20 minute walk uh, from, I think, Urban Nest. Kings Cross perhaps is the furthest way, but they're all within walking distance for sure. And if you were to say, get jump on the tube, the underground, uh, it would be about five or 10 minutes from, from the SOAS campus. So they're all great options really. Um, I would just say, go and have a look at them. Uh, do a bit of research on on where you what areas you might want to stay in, but they're all kind of around the same central London area. Uh, Kings Cross is, is a great area. It's very uh, uh, well located for transport links um, in terms of just getting around London, but also uh, even getting outside of London and exploring uh, the kind of outskirts and, and other places in the UK. Uh, Booking process, you book directly with these halls. So when you are when you want to book, you'll uh, actually what we, what we, in terms of the discounts that we provide for the first two, if you let us know which one you, you would like to book, we, we, there's a special form and, and a code that we can use for, for booking these accommodation options. So we'll give you a code, a SOAS code, and then you can go ahead and make your booking. So we'll give you all of those instructions when you're ready to, to book accommodation. And when you apply, we send you all that information as well. So you'll, you'll get that in an email from us when you apply. Um, and yeah, transport uh, is really easy to get around London, whether you're using the underground, whether you're using buses, even bikes, a lot of people cycle. Um, so if you're used to cycling, um, lots of people cycle around London. And there's, there's cycle lanes uh, pretty much all over central London, but I would say uh, definitely uh, have some experience of cycling uh, in busy cities uh, rather than just jumping on a bike. Uh, but you know, you don't have to cycle on the roads. You can cycle down the canal. There's canal paths, a really nice way to see London. Actually, there's a, there's a canal. I think it's Regent's Canal running through central London, runs around some of these accommodation options around King Cross. Um, and especially in the summer, you'll just see lots of people walking and cycling up and down the canal. Um, and just kind of chilling, really. Um, it's really nice. Um, so there's lots of ways to get around. Buses are really good uh, for quickly getting around. If you just, and I would definitely suggest get, getting an app. So you could either get a Transport for London app on your phone. There's also a City Map app, and all of these information, all of this info will give you when you arrive as well. Um, so those apps on your phone will, will basically give you all the instructions on which buses to take or which underground lines to take. Um, yeah, it's always fun, always a fun experience trying to get to grips with the London tube map. Um, it takes a while, but, uh, but you'll get there. Uh, but yeah, in terms of travel, in terms of these accommodation options and getting to and from campus, I think you'll normally walk it pretty quickly. Um, and you'll you'll really you'll get used to that journey very quickly. It's, it's most of these are are a very short distance from so, so. So I'd really view this as an opportunity to explore London, but also to maybe explore uh, a kind of subject that you're interested in. It's we see doing these summer schools as a pathway uh, into further study at SOAS. So if you're looking or if you're interested in postgraduate study at SOAS. Um, 
then this the summer schools are a way to get a taster of what we do, the way we teach, and, and see whether it's right for you. Um, also, if you're not able to come kind of uh, for a full-time program, then it's a great way to experience what SOAS offers over the summer as well. So um, the first step, I guess, of applying is making your application fee payment. Um, the link to that will be on our website. But once you've got that done, you can get into the actual process itself. Um, all you're really required to provide are your personal details, of course, so kind of very standard information. Um, and you will also be given the opportunity to provide a personal statement. So I guess that kind of falls into what you said, um, letter recommendation, major letter, that, that kind of thing. Um, so in there you can talk about, you know, what's made you apply, where you heard about our course um, and so on. Um, with regards to the documents that you'll need to provide, um, we do ask that you provide your academic transcripts or an off letter or a degree certificate, um, anything that confirms your current study at your institution if you are an undergraduate or postgraduate student. Um, the only other documents that we'd ask you to provide are based on your English language proficiency. So if English is not your first language, um, you might want to provide um, an IELTS certificate or another kind of certification of your ability to speak English. Um, but the full kind of list of the types of certificates you can provide are listed on our website. Um, if you don't have any of those, um, but you've studied at an English speaking institution, you can also just provide the transcript and that would be um, more than enough. The main thing about the application form is the personal statements. Why you want to join the course, tell us what, your, what experience you have already uh, and uh, why you're, what you're hoping to gain from the course. That's really useful. So we pass all your application details on to our conveners. Um, once you're confirmed as, as and confirmed uh, as attending the course, we'll pass that on to conveners. So they'll see your motivation for joining the course and what you want to learn. And they'll base their teaching around that as well. So they make sure that they're um, addressing uh, every kind of every every point that, that you guys want to cover. Um, but other than that, it's just transcript. It can be unofficial. It can be official. Um, whatever is easiest for you guys to get. And uh, if English isn't your first language, then some kind of proof of your ability uh, uh, or your English language level. Uh, and that's about it. The rest is quite straightforward. Um, I think when you apply, it, it has it tells you how many kind of pages there are, and there's about 50 or so pages. So it might look a bit daunting at, at, uh, initially. But they're very quick. They're literally yes, no answers, so it doesn't take very long at all. So if you're into teaching for those who are working, you would like a letter from my university. So if you're employed or working, um, then just a certificate perhaps uh, from or your transcript or certificate of completion of your degree um, is absolutely fine. Uh, if you're working and have studied, then we're kind of confident that your uh, your level is up as well. We just need to be sure that students have got a, around at least one year's uh, undergraduate experience under their belt just so they don't struggle uh, with the kind of material uh, and the level that, that we're teaching on. So if you're employed, then I wouldn't worry so much about uh, the transcript and things, but if you've got something that you can attach, then great. Uh, could credit acquired during the summer school help to apply in the future for a master's in the UK? I mean that depends depends on the the university you're applying with whether they can uh, use that credit. But something to say about the credit is that it's at undergraduate level, um, so it's not at mas it's not master level credit. So I would say uh, most of the time it can't it wouldn't count towards a master's program. Um, but you would have to discuss that with with the institution that you're applying to. Uh, our application, official application deadline is at the end of May, um, but I would say apply before the end of March so you qualify for that early bird 10% discount. Uh, get your applications in now if you can. Other places limited, do I need to be very quick? Yeah, that's a good question, Kelly. Um, so places do become limited, but I'd say at this point there you don't need to be very quick we're still relatively early but um, I to be honest we haven't had a course that has filled up and we've had to close in terms of it's it's filled up and we can't offer any more places so I wouldn't worry about that um, 
we've got space on our courses to accommodate plenty of students. So, uh, and one of the things about our courses is again, that might be different from other places is that, is that you won't be in a massive group of students, say 50 plus. Um, our courses are usually around between say 20 to 30 students. Um, some might be a bit more, some might be a bit less, um, but it's usually quite a small group uh, relatively compared to other universities. So that's quite a nice thing as well. Uh, so yeah, Kelly, don't worry, but uh, just get it in before the before the end of March and you'll be fine. Our email address and phone number is, is on screen there. So get in touch with us. Uh, and we're really looking forward to, to welcoming uh, those who do apply and those who come. We're really looking forward to, to welcoming you this summer. Um, it's, a, it's a really exciting time. So yeah, thank you all so much and see you this summer.